What is going on everybody? Hope everyone is good out there. Let's get into another video. You know it's so funny. If you know any person who owns like a Sony camera, a full frame Sony camera, more than likely at some point they're gonna start talking about the low light performance. Just like anybody who does jujitsu, at some point, somewhere in the conversation, they are gonna talk about that they do jujitsu. And guess what? I'm guilty of both over here. <laughs> it's true though. So for me, and I posted a video in uh, on IG at some point earlier today. I was showing some like some test footage that I got while I was in Miami, some some low light test footage, because I had a chance to really like push the limits of what it can do in low light. It's just where in, I was like in Wynwood and like Edgewater and like specifically Wynwood, pretty much you got a couple street lights and the rest is just illuminated by car headlights. And I ramped up the ISO so high on the Sony camera, on the A7S III, and the image still came out super, super, super clean. I was really, I was really impressed by it. Like it really showed me like what this thing can really do. And for me, I always like shooting low light nighttime shoots photography videography i just have this affinity towards like the night i don't know something about especially if like it rains and then we, we do a night shoot oh man i'm really loving it it's just the reflections of the light off the water it just looks amazing so i knew getting into I would, a new camera like i wanted to go full frame right off the bat and I, because i looked at it like this is going to be an investment this is what i wanted to do the days of it being just for like leisure and a hobby like that was out the window this was treated like a business and i have to make the investment so i know i wanted to go from crop sensor to full frame sensor because i understood like okay and not to get too technical into it there's a plenty of other videos that are out that'll break down like the specs on how a full frame works with low light against a crop sense crop sensor lens and all that good stuff but basically bigger size sensor it's two times the size of a crop sensor it's allowing more light into the image which can allow for a less noisier image right that's like the super super broken down simplified version of it right we'll be here all day if, to, if you wanted to really get specific with it so i knew i wanted to go that route but it's not just about being able to have a clean image in low light now it has to be able to focus you know it has to focus on whatever your your subject is and a lot of cameras out there especially in this like the price point i was looking for they they were failing like they could not focus in low light situations which many cameras do you know it's hard for a lot of cameras that they can't focus in low light or if the if it's a wide aperture for example right so and i like to shoot a lot of times in like a 1.4 1.8 unfortunately like this lens that i'm using this is an 18 millimeter 2.8 so not the not my favorite one but i needed something that was a little bit wider for the youtube shoot youtube video so that's why i'm using this one and i can like that's how close i am i can reach out and actually grab it so with that sony started to just pop up and i'm like i started to just pay more attention to sony and I was already messing with some of the crop sensor cameras, you know, the, the Alpha 6000, the 6000, 61, 63, 6300, things like that. And even like the point shoot ones from even back in the day before. But then I saw the A7S III and saw what they were just doing with it in these low light situations. And I'm like, it, it's kind of crazy. Like some of these shoots that I was seeing, like they were shooting basically in the dark. And once I got my hand on it, I was like, okay, this is perfect for me. And that's how I made the choice with the for the A7S III. And that's how you guys should make your choices for when you're deciding on new gear. What is it that you're gonna be using it for? Like, does it have, do the pros and cons match what you're trying to do? You know, like for example, I'm more video specific and the limitations on the A7S III start to really come in when you deal with photography. I knew that, I'm okay with that. The cons really didn't apply to what I'm trying to do the pros all the way and one of them were the low light like if you look up any top 10 low light cameras a7s3 is, is definitely in there and it is true and i'll have some footage somewhere they'll be in in this video dropping it in there but look at it it's like you can get a clean image and it has to do with not only that it is a full frame but these native isos i was using um, most of the footage that i was doing in miami was at 12,800 iso and I mean, and no post editing, like 
I may have done put a little curve on it, but other than that, this is like the images that you see is right out of the body and it looks amazing. And that's what was like, okay, this is a beast in low light. And that's what really, why you see like a lot of people, they tend to go with the A7S III because you're getting like a professional grade image at in a nice body. And for the price point, it could be, depending on who you ask, it could be a little pricey, but it's definitely not like the Sony Alpha 1, which is like going for like 6,600, I think right now for just the body alone. So that's what get, brought me to the decision to go with the A7S III and really just the, the Sony nucleus, the Sony ecosystem as a whole is really why I'm on board with it because I'm getting these great images and these picture profiles are just looking amazing. You know, S-Log3 is another one. Like in all the images that you'll see, it's either S-Log3 or s -Cinetone. I'll put it in the description or I'll actually put it in the video, like which profile is what. I mean, you're able to get some amazing, amazing image quality right out of the body. You know, no post, you know, post-production editing, nothing, no grading. Depending if you have time or not, yeah, you can shoot an S-Log3. If you have the time, go ahead and grade it and you can grade it to your liking, have the color profile that you want. But if you're just like, okay, I need to just get this footage out now, you can put the s tone picture profile on here, shoot in the dark, take it up to ISO 12,800, and you're ready to rock and roll and it's for me it's it's a no for me it's a no-brainer like for me it's a no-brainer and it's been definitely changing how i shoot the type of shoots that i'm getting and i like it so if you're thinking about getting some new gear getting some new hardware you want to start shooting low light or thinking about it and really even if you're not necessarily thinking about it you just want to be prepared for it like you might have a nighttime shoot i don't know you might shoot weddings for example and you're gonna need a low light camera to shoot, you know, to shoot the reception, you know, or to shoot part of the wedding that it goes into the night and things like that. So you wanna just consider all these things when you're purchasing gear. Don't, like I said before, don't think about purchasing gear because it's the new gear or it's the, the thing everybody's talking about. Research it and see does it fit with what you're trying to do, what you, I wouldn't say you want, because if I was to say everything that I want, this bill would be $100,000. But what do you need and what do you need at, at the moment? So something to think about, but all right, let me get out of here. I'm rambling. It's pouring outside. The dog is barking. Let me get out of here, guys. Another video is on the way. And as always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, say what's up. Appreciate you guys. Talk to you later. Peace.